again the overall of uh, 14 years of experience and he started the career as SMDP to lab engineer at NIT Calicut from 2009 to 2013 and later he moved into the Alliance application engineer at Coral Technologies Bangalore from 2013 to 2016 and he acted as a project engineer at a mate government of India sponsored project titled SMDP chip for system design at the MNNAT Alagaba from 2016 to 2021. So in the same project, he has submitted and completed his PhD. He awarded the PhD from uh, title of uh, high throughput video coding hardware architecture for USD applications in MNNAT Alagaba. He owns the total of three chip tape outs involved and certified by Karen's official partner, and he has published several papers in national and international journals. His area of expertise is VLSA architecture, ASIC, FPGA, and the SOC design. So presently, he is working as a technical manager in Temple Technologies Private Limited, Bangalore. So welcome you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, you can please uh, take over the session, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so let me share my screen. Uh, is it my screen visible, sir? Yes, yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Let's go for the presentation. Yeah, very good morning, all. Um, very, uh, we are uh, glad to be part of uh, FTP program. Uh, on behalf of Intiple Technology, uh, we welcome you for this day two. In the day two, uh, we are continuation with the day one. Uh, in the day one, we have seen entire RTL2 GDS2 flow. I hope uh, all of our um, friends, uh, means all, all of our participants, uh, maybe see, means uh, uh, cleared out all the steps in the RTL2 GDS2 flow. One of our, my colleague, uh, Mr. Priyan Shudatta, he had uh, given an uh, overview. So today we are going to uh, see the timing analysis. Timing analysis. We can have the timing analysis related, uh, you know, flow. If you see the flow uh, in the physical design. Retro. Yeah. So the timing analysis can be uh, in various stages. You can be, you know, uh, calculated the uh, performance of your design. So we uh, verify our design with the static timing analysis. We also have the dynamic timing analysis that happens at the simulation stage. And here uh, today we are going to see the timing performance uh, after layout. We call it as a post layout or also post route. It's in the physical design stage. So in the physical design stage, our URT design, we have the netlist file, constraints, and libraries. These are the three main uh, primary inputs required. Then floor planning, power planning. So in the floor planning, uh, we have done the determining the height and width of the block, or um, our uh, URT design in the core area. Or the next one is the power plan. In the power plan, all the metal layers. Okay, all the metal layers like a PG route, power and ground related power ring and straps created. Then after play, reflect it. We are going to place the standard cells, so it's like a automatic placement uh, using the inverse tool, and then CTS clock tree synthesis and routing. So these are the primary uh, five stages in the physical design. After that, we are going to verify the uh, timing analysis using Tempest tool uh, after routing stage. So routing after we are going to extract the metal layers RC components and then we uh, analyze the uh, delays also after get the delays also then we will get the 
uh, each and every time it means a clock path and uh, we can match then if it is a setup or hold time issues how we can be um, if you have any violations how can we correct or fix the violations we are going to see so with this introduction we'll start uh, today's session uh, so i hope uh, do you have any questions uh, regarding last uh, yesterday's sessions if you have any questions we can start so our uh, let's uh, we can continue then if you have any questions okay then fine we'll go ahead so here if you see here after routing we will get the routed netlist and then rc extraction will get the three uh, means uh, two primary files one is the standard delay format sdf file and then spef file standard parasitic extracted format so this one spef this contains related you know each and every uh, you know network related uh, parameters rc components it contains and we'll see it in the subsequent slides sdf files contain the delay of the standard cells so the uh, this sta means that we have doing the timing analysis or tempus related tools we can do before after the you know before the physical design or else we can say after synthesis post layout sta we, this is the post layout sta after uh, synthesis or you can also do this one after routing so we are going for the case study of the post layout sta because in the pre layout sta you need not worry about because it's all about uh, optimization and you need not require it's only estimated values delays you will find in the pre layout stage but in the post layout stage you will have all the uh, layout and the metal layers laid on all your logical network and then you have the sdf Uh, delay formats are there and parasitic extraction formats are there so with this two considerations and along with your constraints file sdc file and netlist and then you can be uh, check the set, setup and hold violations mainly in this flow we are going to be concerned two primary checks one is the setup and hold related uh, this terminology we are getting into the next slides so here uh, the difference between the pre layout and post layout timing analysis so if you uh, see the uh, this is our um, uh, if you see this is our system on chip and you have the clock sourcing coming from external oscillator and the clock source pin so the yellow uh, box is the our design or our block so we, this is the clock definition point here um uh sir i hope uh, my pointer is visible when i'm showing is it visible or okay let me take pen so yeah so if you see this one clock definition point and then you have the oscillator so this is the external external clock source and this clocks you you have this is the depth latency so it's a source latency because it is coming from clock source to like a uh, definition like in it means entry point into your block so this is the source clock source latency we call it is so from there to you have the inside your block you have register to register path you can see register 1 register 2 in between you have combinational circuit in this path uh the definition point from this to here we call it as a network latency or you can see here clock network latency or delay or uh, network delay so because uh, here after this pin now you can see here clock definition from uh, register 1 and register 2 so this one is called as a clock network latency from here to here so these are the terminologies we are going to see what are the network latency and source and also uh, some of the clock related terminology so when we are analyzing for sta static timing analysis so when you do the pre layout so ideal clock we are going to assume 
and then it is only estimated skew skew is nothing but uh, the time difference between the reaching the clock in different flops so let's say like a here in this if let's say i'll remove this. so now we can if you see here there are two register paths so here also clock is triggering here and also another flop is triggering here so the difference between this clock so this is called a skew so it is a estimated skew not real skew okay so here all ideal clock is estimated so complexity is not that much at the pre layout stsi and here net net delays so these are the delays are there net these delays are wire load model so this is a predefined already existed some of the previous project uh, related data model and we will use to estimate the net delays then after we will verify the flow for our sta for setup and hold for this pre pre layout sta when you come to post layout sta here the real challenge comes you have the actual clock here and it is also propagated because when you are layout after layout clock tree synthesis cts is also going to be complete at this stage and routing stage also complete and then your actually propagated clock will be appear um, i hope uh, you are all participants with me uh, sir are you uh, is it clear your side my voice and also screen sharing could you please yes, acknowledge sir. yes sir thank you yeah in between i'm checking because i have some you know network instability so if you have disconnect kindly just uh, immediately alert so that i will be reconnect okay so in the post layout sta we have parasitic extraction spf file and SD, sdf file so this is the delay related format file and para parasitic related file and final timing sign off so here not only close the signing uh, timing related violations also we will sign off and we will hand off to the uh, uh, next uh, means the gds2 file once this stage after post layout yeah so if you see now we'll go to the post layout what are the input files required obviously we required netlist file for post layout so netlist file routed netlist this is a not uh, means after routing stage we extract our netlist file and then gate level netlist it's contained having the circuit description after post routing stage next one is the constraint file sdc file so sdc file constraints related to the clock definition generated clock if you have virtual clock and also uncertainty clock related uncertainty so uncertainty is nothing but let's say like in ideal case ideal case with uh, as per our uh, you know assumption that clock will be trigger all the registers in our core area ideally but in practical you have some network if a, if let's say like in your block if you see in the previous slide so let's say like here the flop is here one flop here and another flop at the end of this block this flop will be uh, rising edge will be triggered means it will be uh, you know encounter first then after some network delay and it is going to be uh, you know uh, encounter and the second or in the path other registers so in this we have to consider this uncertainty or some if let's say like we will balance this queue in even though balance queue there is some uncertainty so that that component we have to be uh, consider that value so in we have the keep the certain cons uncertainty constraint files so you can see this uncertainty components are here uh, one is jitter jitter is the some when you in your clock coming from the external oscillator so unexpected unwanted jitter signal and then skew this is the difference between the two different flops arrival time for the clock trigger time and then extra margin so uncertainty contain skew plus jitter so then after io delays input output delays when your block let's say like this is my 
my uh, block urt block so before data arriving this is called input delay and after this one so because urt is going to be as a sub block in your entire chip so if this is required uh, specifications what are the input delay and output delay so this will be considered also in the constraint file apart from if you have also you have any false paths you need to identify and give that the false paths also so let's say like false paths in your uh, design file sometimes the path will not be you know activate or not be exercised in all the conditions so you can find identify that false paths and you can give that constraints so that your timing engine will not consider that path calculations it will be avoided otherwise it will be considered multi cycle paths if if in between the register to register path you required more than one clock cycle that is called multi cycle paths maximum fan in fan out so the fan out is nothing but if if a cell driving maximum number of outputs so fan out and maximum capacitance maximum load so these are the some uh, also comes under sdc file constraint so we are we have seen primary one uh, netlist and sdc and then after standard delay format it contains in our all in our layout we have standard cells right in the standard cells each standard cell have it a unit delay so we have to consider that delay when we are calculating because it all uh, cumulative value of your network delay and standard cells delay so then it will total delay will be match we were clock constraint one one clock period so next one spf so standard parasitic exchange format spf so this it contains the parasitics of design extracted in the physical design tools so after layout we will extract rc components then we will save as a spf format Up, so total now till now we have four inputs and along with you required one more without this your tool can't estimate your standard cell delay your network delay and all so it can it your tool will extract delay models from this dot lib library yeah let's move on so these are the five inputs and what are the outputs you will have the timing path report and also some debugging if you have any issues you need to be debug your set up and hold issues so now let's come network means uh, you have seen the dot v file netlist file so then if you uh, remaining only this one standard delay format and spf format how it is look like you can see uh, it contains standard delay format contain timing information of each cell each standard cells and, and this can be used at any stage in the asic design flow and also this can also used at the front end when you are delay calculation or power calculation sdf file or vcd file so value change dump file and standard delay format when you are calculating at rtl power also it's a possible or timing related checks so you have this you can uh, this file can be utilized for the calculations of the old delay and then next one um, delays so delays it's represented it will be uh, module delay paths it contains the interconnect delay port delays and timing checks related setup hold of that uh, you know each cell and recovery removal if you have any latch and all so skew values wet time period and if you have any so and other things constraints path skew time period so these are the terminology for the sta uh, paths clock path data path or skew skew is the difference and the clock period and total sum and differentiation and then timing environment so if you have operating conditions pvt operating conditions okay and then conditional unconditional model timing paths and also you have the environmental and technology parameters called pvt uh, process variation temperature and voltage along with the while load models 
So SDF file contains uh, extensive details about the timing related and uh, environmental uh, parameters, PVD conditions. So how it is look like SDF file? So the, here is the example. So header file, it contains the header file. It defi defines the program tool name and the uh, format type and version type and the old PVT voltage pro process voltage and temperature values it will be and time scale and then SDF inside I means so this is the header file and body if you see cell name and then buffer type if cell if it is a buffer or NOR gate you have so if you you can see the difference here NOR means NOR gate so you can see this is not uh, NOR gate and also it is a three input NOR gate and X8 is the drive strength. So when you are see the, the standard cells of, in the physical design, it will comes with the, uh, this is the number of inputs, NOR gate, three input and X8 is the drive strength. So you have the different drive strength in your technology file. One is it will start from X1 to even X24 also. It will come like a X1, X2, X3 and all till 24. So wide variety of NOR gate will be available in your library file. So you can be say that if you are lower drive strength and higher drive strength have different delay formats. Let's say like a low delay cells also and more delayed cells also. So that means low power and high performance cells also. Th different flavor standard cells available. Even if you take buffer here, buffer buff X2 means so we drive strength of two is there buff x so we will see what is the advantage of this drive strength so when we are sizing and gate sizing upsizing and downsizing we are play with this drive strength only so next yeah so we have seen sdf format now um standard parasitic exchange format here so this is related to the uh, you know IEEE standard format. It represents the parasitic data of wires in your design. So it's uh, like a, it is also have the inductance and also as per the IEEE format, it contains the parasitic resistance and capacitance and it is cap captured in the .spf format. So it is used for cal delay calculation and ensuring signal integrity of the chip. And it, it obviously it did determine the operating frequency of your design. So uh, almost all the EDA tools support this format to calculate your operating frequency of or speed of your design. For this also file it has certain format. Major four sections are there. First header section. In the data section, format standard type and design if it is as a date and uh, tool type and other units like a uh, timing unit, capacitor unit, resistor in it, inductor unit type and all. Next section, mapping, name mapping. So it has a uh, P address bar or programmable, programmable select, programmable reset. So SPF related any uh, ports naming related and port selections different ports if you have one if in your um, cells if you have one port two port based on that port you have capacitance values and parasitic values here it contains the parasitic resistor uh, uh, capacitor calculations and connectivity values yeah next if you see the difference between these two um, this is the SP, uh, SPF for standard parasitic extraction format and standard delay format abbreviation between this and net delays. It describes the net list and RC information. Whereas S SDF only cell delay, cell delay calculations and it generated by um, tools and also inverse tools will be generated and also it is there generated by the inverse. Both are generated by inverse tool in our demo. So next one is it, this. This is a going to be input to your STA tool for post layout timing analysis, and this is used also for front end. 
So what are the steps for post layout STA? First, you need to read the libraries. So we are going to use in this demo Tempest tool from Cadence. And first step, your read timing related libraries. So slow.lib is the technology file. So we have, if you have the Cadence, you have 45 nanometer, 90 and 180 nanometer. You have different uh, libraries like a fast, slow and typical. So what is the difference between if you see that uh, three different PVT conditions, let's say like um, in, in slow, you have temperature 125 degrees. In the fast, it is temperature is 25 degrees, room temperature and all. So it's now different PVT conditions and also other parameters changes. So you can consider, let's say like as a, uh, you know, uh, when we are designing any IC, we have, it should be run all the operating conditions, right? If it is a weather room temperature or if it is a uh, minus degree temperature. So that, that's how if you have different PVT conditions, we need to run our uh, device. So that's why you have different libraries, slow.lib or fast.lib and typical.lib. The next one, netlist file. So read very long netlist, and this is the netlist file of the routed design. And third one, model type. So if you are model, you are, you are going to be, instead set this model top level name, you are. Then applying timing constraints, now, after routing, what is the timing status? SDC file or before the, um, you know, SDC file input of SDC or physical design also, you can consider. Then SPF file. So in, after layout your design, you generated SPF, that SPF file you have to load to your Tempest tool. And then timing report, report timing. And then this is how it is look like your timing report, STA or Tempest report. It will give you a path and what type of path it is a setup path or hold. If it is a met means it is achieved timing path. Let's say like I want to run one gigahertz speed of my operating frequency uh, or my timing goal is one gigahertz. So one gigahertz means if you convert this one, uh, time equal uh, F equal one by T, right? Uh, frequency frequency domain. So then F equal one nanosecond. So we have to in this path. Yeah, in this path, if timing met. So this is a, if it is a less than one nanosecond, then it will be met. Otherwise, if it is behind one nanosecond, it will show the violated path. And then what are the violet paths? So if in this path, these are the standard cells. It is given some number, numbering uh, G type, uh, gate level type. This each and every uh, cell uh, details you can give NAND gate. So this one is uh, naming. And this is the actual cell, NAND gate, a uh, four input NAND gate and XL is your drive strength. And OR gate also, you have X1 is four input OR gate. And then NAND gate three input, X1 is drive strength. So you can divide last, last X1, X2, X3, X all. These are the drive strength. And first one is the type of stand, standard cells, whether it is a sequential or combinational. So you can see sequential here, D5 of X2 combination. So each cell comes with this delay. So this is the cell delay, this cell delay. So it is adding here. You can see each cell delays are adding, cumulating, and each then final. So this is the final delay value. And also see here, uh, what is the timing met or not? Timing, it is the arrival time. So in this path, it is arrived, but required time is 1.911. So Slack, there is a term called Slack. Slack is nothing but it is a, uh, we will check whether if I say one nanosecond is my required time. Okay. If it is one nanosecond before 0.9 nanoseconds, if it is arrived. So this is called 
required time minus arrival time so this is called slack slack is nothing but it is a see you can see this is the slack time so you have positive slack so if you in your design if you have the positive slack then only it will work real time otherwise it will not work your ic or your device your block so you should be maintain the positive slack if we have the negative slack let's say like instead of 0.9 if my path in this cell this entire cells consumed more than 1 nanosecond that is called negative slack so if you have negative slack means some of the cells are violated your setup and old violations so we need to fix that old violations are set up then only we can sign off our timing yeah so this is the post layout sta so almost all same pre and post layout here also the same parameters in this report you will see the path one like if you have thousand paths even million paths also you need to be verified so basically uh, physical design um, uh, earlier if you have 180 90 nanometer even 45 nanometer post means physical verification is not going to be that much complexity but less than uh, 45 nanometer pv uh, along with the pd design uh, pv physical verification became very complicated and you have to check because when we go in deep submicron your technology 40, 4 nanometer 40 nanometer or 3 nanometer kind of technology node you will find the each and every and you have tight constraints timing constraints and you are you are work with the picoseconds not only nanoseconds so even one picosecond also you will try hard in the real time projects industry project they work for picoseconds in behind giga edge or you know femto uh, edge so femto means like a um, picoseconds and if you have what is the nanoseconds equal to thousand picoseconds right so even the thousand picoseconds also they try to be optimized their path timing path to achieve and so that it will be uh, reach your timing performance of your design background about the timing and we just i'll introduce some of the terminology also so before tea break we'll see the terminology and um, you know uh, how it is the what what is the uh, paths we have to consider and where we check this timing analysis related things and uh, if it is well and good if you finish and we will immediately we can start our demo so here i forgot to uh, you know inform in early so actually uh, today's session we have two parts one part uh, before post means uh, before lunch we have the timing analysis using tempus and the second part uh, power analysis so in the afternoon we have using the voltage tool we are going to be verify power power sign off so uh, in the first half timing sign off so this is again from this synthesis stage to routing you can be verify your timing analysis after synthesis, post synthesis timing analysis are also called pre layout STA. Here after synthesis, you are going to be calculated or it's ideal cl clock source you are going to be checked with your STA. And then also this is the back, back end or physical design. This is the uh, synthesis and A routing stage you have to be consider your static timing analysis in advanced level you can also go for noise crosstalk signal integrity issues power integrity issues and all so this is the graphical representation for sta engine this is the static timing analysis engine you have the library files input netlist file and then timing constraints file and also spf file sdf file total five inputs required then we will see the reports and log files and also here after reading the reports if you find a setup and hold we have to fix that 
So uh, timing libraries, uh, this contains a cell library and it's a input output and power related information, operating conditions, power consumption of each and every uh, cell and also timing model, arc and all. So this is normally given by the foundry. If you have technology files like a TSMC, UMC, or if you have SCL technology, they provide this lib files. And carrots, they are giving freely uh, generic PDK. This is also very industrial standard, uh, 45 nanometer for a learning hub, for a learning and research purpose. So this is a typical library file look like. Uh, earlier we have seen spec format and uh, SDF, SDF format. Here we are seeing this dot lib format. So it start with the library type slow, slow lib and delay format lookup table based delay model. And then uh, you have timing unit instantiation like a timing one nanosecond for delays, a voltage one volt, current for one micro ampere, and then resistor one kilo ohms and one nanowatt uh, leakage power. So this, when we read the, see the reports, this will, uh, it's correlate this uh, timing unit. And all this timing unit is extracting this dot lib file only. And then here PVT conditions, voltage, process, temperature. You can see here 125 degrees Celsius when you use for slow dot lib. And the 0.9 volt when you are extract means the data from the standard cells from slow dot lib. So this is the slow type. So in this in this same file, if you consider one D fifth flop related all the information. You can see it is started with the D fifth flop is the uh, cell name and it is H and Q high. Uh, uh, I think um, it's a high Q and X one is the drive strength here. So cell instantiation name footprint name area. So we have how PPA, right? Uh, performance, power, and area. All the reports uh, means how this will get this from this dot lib file only. So from here you will get the area, this component, and the leakage power. So power related one component here you will get performance power related, and the performance. So timing. So you can see here um, uh, timing related. So this one you will get it from this P here. So this file contains power performance and timing related, power related and area related. So this is again, um, not, uh, so identification purpose, this cell name, area and functionality, checking functionality and delay. Delay means timing related. So timing ox inside your dot lib files. So you have uh, propagation delay based on your rise and fall um, transition, rise and fall transition and direction, type of pin direction. You have the lookup tables, LUT tables, based on that, it has a calculated. You can see input transition is the X axis, axis and output delay is the Y axis. So based on this value, lookup table, it will be choose and then it will be calculated. And also maximum capacitance values for uh, design rule violations or uh, design rule environment related and pin white and electrical properties also characteristics of the pin direction type so this is an example for or gate a simple two input or gate you can see simple two input or gate and then x3 is the drive strength and the left files so we required physical related information then only we will see the layout so layout left file is lab, lab, library exchange format. It contains the uh, physical information of your standard cells and macros, which is used for placement and routing engine. When you require placement time, then it will be because, um, because of left file only, you could able to see this kind of layout view in your inverse. So you can see when you are a simple NAND gate, if you read from the left file, it contains the VDD and also pin type directions and shapes abstract view and also blockages if you have any blockages symmetry and reference points so it is extract the uh, inverse backend tool extract all information of your standard cells physical design related all information like a metal layers how it is metal layers so if you see back side these colors are metal layers so different metal layers have different colors so if you want to connect two metal layers you need wires so this all metal layer related information also 
it will contain in this format. You can see that the, one of the format for the left files. So here, one, one thing you can observe here, DRC rules are, see, this is the minimum cut, minimum width, minimum width of particular metal layer. So if you not follow this minimum width, then you, you are going to be fail your DRC, design rule checks. This is laid down are given by the foundry. So we have to honor for this DRC, uh, all the, you know, around 800 for even 45 nanometer. If you go for lower thousand, more than thousand DRC violations also you need to be checked. So this is how physical verification become a complicated because when you are signing off, it's more complicated than actual designing, physical designing. Here netlist is you dot vr dot vhd format. So this is one netlist format. You have standard cells and also it is mapped. You can see here and uh, navigate x1 to input adder x2 inverter and d5 flop. So these are the cells. So if you observed net before see synthesis and after synthesis. So this is the product of the synthesis, right? After synthesis. So model name in input instantiation look like same, but only in middle you will find the instantiation or the netlist or this is mapped one to your technology, particular technology node. So it contains the standard cells. So these are the standard cells and drive strengths. And these are the drive strength. You can see D5 flaw of X8. So this is the drive strength and DFF is the name. Macros and memories. If you have macros or bigger uh, predefined cells or memories, SROM, DRAM, or some kind of memories, also you can. It contains that left files contains and ports ports of standard cells and macros and interconnect details. So these things will contains the netlist file. So this we have seen um, as the format of this SP standard name. Okay, and the spec file format also we have and uh, SDF also. We have seen back annotation of how it is look like a SDF file format also. So this is the command line. So when we are working for working backend, either PD or physical design or physical verification or uh, power sign off or timing sign off, you required uh, TCL scripting language, tool command language. So this is one of the command write underscore SDF view worst case design dot SDF format. So with this, it will be right one uh, SDF file. It will be create that inverse tool will be create. So this is the inverse command to generate SDF file. So this is again SDF file format. Yeah, let's come to how your STA engine calculated your delays in your uh, block. So this is the thumb rule. Any any of the static STA tool it going to be divide your block into different paths. So how many paths? Total four paths. You can see path one here. So there are total four paths. Any any of the block or even chip level or block level. You can divide your timing. If you want to be verified timing performance, the our delay calculations of your design, you need to be break down your entire data path or clock path into four different paths. First path, register to register path. So you can see this uh, pink color. Okay, so you can see this path one. So register to register path is means, so between the register, this one, one register, second register. So the path between this and Q. So this is the path we call as a ridge path. Ridge path to ridge very important when you are signing off your. So in this path, this flop also need to be on and set up and hold checks. And also second path also second slide means register also need to be on or your hold checks or set up checks. So we have to verify with that path one. Next one path two. Path to input to register. So in input to into ridge, we call it also. So this is the path to. D, D port of your first register. So that is called path to and this path to contains uh, input to register path. So this 
also we get the delay. Next part three, register to output path. So here in the last registered path or register path to output file. So this is the path two. And also if you have combination logic, it is there, you have to consider. And the uh, fourth path, input to output. So just here to here, all you have to consider. Uh, this is the path, green color. Green color is the path four. So I hope you you understood. I think all of you know this how clock paths in your design. Yeah, these are the terminology slack. So slack is difference between the required time minus actual. Okay, so it's like a uh, slack. Uh, if I <coughs> so our so achieved time and then desired time for timing path. So Slack determines the design is working or not for a specified speed. As I said earlier, if I uh, want to run one gigahertz speed of my design, let's say how it is determined. Um, every, we have all our devices are there. Let's say in my design, um, if you see properties of my sys, uh, processor, you will see the performance, how much delay it is taking. Um, if, let's go properties to you. So it's uh, showing um, Intel Core i5 processor and at the rate 2. Point. It's not only this laptop, you will find for your mobile also or any device, it will comes with the operating frequency, maximum operating frequency of this. So 2.4 gigahertz. So if you convert 2.4 gigahertz to uh, frequency domain to time domain, it comes around 0.25 picosecond, uh, nanosecond, sorry. 0.25 nanoseconds. If I click something in this and to take this action for this processor, only required 0.25. So I'll, I'll go here. So it means here, if uh, for my processor, it is running uh, 2.5 gigahertz. So if you are, this is F equal to 2.5, T equal to 1 by F. So T comes around 0.25 nanoseconds. So only 0.25 nanoseconds required for your processor to be uh, take the decisions and all. So that is how it is uh, work uh, your processor speed and all. So the same way Slack is determines if it is a less than this timing period or not, it will clock check in your paths. Then only it will be, uh, that is determined the operating frequency of your design. And then timing related Slack definitions arrival time. So it is time taken data to be travel from, uh, travel to end point. So if we have the block here, let's say, this is entire your block. You have in this block, you have the all the, uh, standard cells. So arrival time means from input to end point here. So this path, this is called arrival time from here to here delay, arrival time delay. Required time means, so I, I want to run this block at one clock period, one clock period we can, one rising to another rising. one rise and fall time. So here to here, uh, if you point, uh, if I say one nanosecond, 0.5 nanosecond is the rise time and 0.5 nanosecond is the fall time. So we will be correlate with this required time. So this is the one nanosecond required time. Your input to output should be reached. So that is called slack is required time minus arrival time. So simple, it just simple, like we are expecting uh, output some value at uh, some of the delay value and whether we are checking arrival time is coming within that limit or not. If it is not, then we have to be concerned in that our logic. So pause, if it is a positive value of the slack, arrival time is before the required time. That is the required uh, desired functionality for our design. Negative slack. If the arrival time is after the required time, that is called negative slack. 
So basically, zero slack also acceptable. Zero slack means arrival and required time are the same. So here the thumb rule is if you are positive slack or zero slack called as a timing mat. So in simple we can say timing mat or timing uh, uh, timing close or timing closed or closure. So that things you can use if you have positive slack and zero slack. For a negative slack, timing violations. We have to check whether it is a um, setup hold or DRV related or what type of violations it is. So we have to clear this negative slack. Then only we can uh, sign off our GDS2 file or final file generate. So let's see uh, a simple reg to reg path. So this is a reg path to reg path. You have combination logic here. So in this reg to reg path, you have the clock one here and the clock two here. Okay. In the clock one, in the ideal CLK is going rising and falling and rising. So this is the, in this, your, uh, uh, this C2O. So this is the inside your reg registered required time, time delay, C2O. So when, when you want to be, uh, you know, if you have a register one clock, in the register one clock, it contains the TCO and the register one to Q data. So if you see, this is the rising edge of the clock. At this time, there is no values here. And the next rising edge of the clock before, data should be ready. Our data should be ready. So you can see data valued. So this Q, this D value data and Q, Q value should be ready. So then only data valued. That means it is on or your setup calculations. And this is the setup slack. You can see the green color is the setup. So setup slack is nothing but data required time minus data arrival time. So if, if it is, let's say like this uh, D, you can see D value, uh, D value of register two this d value of register to if it is coming after this rising edge of the clock maybe it is coming here then it will be violate your setup slack so then we have to be either you have to be uh, slow down or you are, i mean so, uh, you are fast you have to fasten this path or you have to be uh, add the you by using inverters and buffers you can have to be um, you know accelerate your path and hold slack. Hold slack is after rising edge of the clock. You can see after rising TCO and data and also hold slack. This all things will be considered. Here it is slightly opposite to the data arrival minus required time. So that is called hold slack. So if any all in an entire river block registered to register path, if it is hold and set up if hold and set up if it is not met so then it will be violative and it may not sync data to be uh, you know uh, transfer from this point to this second path so our uh, data to be not be fetching from this input to this output okay so it will be required set up and hold slack uh, then only it will be data pro passes from this point to end point So here the Tempest graphical user interface. So this is the uh, uh, after inverse. This is the schematic. Uh, you have the, the D flip flops here, this combination logic here, and D flip flop. So this is the register to register in between this path. So you can save this netlist file, save design. If you click on the file, save design, then it will be save as a dot netlist file. In that in this path in in this design so you have paths are there so, right input to output this is one path so you can see clock input to output so this is called into io IOET output path another path register to register path so this reg path so third path input to register path and fourth path register to output so this this kind of path we will divide and this timing debugger in the tool, it will be give the paths in the historic historic diagram, and it says what type of path is this, how many paths 
if any paths are volts negative slack total negative slack number of paths fail pass and fail so all those checks it will be given if it is negative slack it will red color so always remember in whenever we are seeing particular path color is red that means negative slack green and blue are acceptable so here details inside the path what are the standard cells how much delay it consumes and that thing information also be there in that uh, like a here in the uh, interface here and also it will say require time positive slack or negative slack and then start pin and the top main clock path and what is the path type number of paths are there and also category it's a input to registered category and registered to registered category so this worst negative wns tns mm, worst negative slack means which path take more delay total negative slack means if you have more number of um, more number of paths all all together we have the total negative slack so we have to consider wns tns components also uh, with, when we have the negative slack so this one is enhanced version of uh, timing report path one in naming and whether if it is met or not and then what type of check whether a leading edge or falling edge rising or falling edge of your register type and then arrival time arrival time and then set up slack for your uh, as per standard cells and all and the phase shift uncertainty values arrival required time and the slack type so this is the positive slack so we have received and also rising and input delay output delay to also add up and then standard cells types these are the nor gate to input x2 is the drive strength ao motor type clock x1 so then d5 flop x1 so these are the uh, name and drive strength of your cells here instantiation name and the arc arc type input to output or input delay or outside delay so this and it's each cell delay total comes as a arrival delay and the arrival delay also it give and the required delay it's going to be uh, subtract from the required delay that is for hold timing report this one is um, oh, oh, sorry that is earlier one set up and this one is hold related timing report so see here old earlier it was timing met now if you consider here it is violated you can see path one violated and type of check is a old type and then beginning point trigger point and end point so each each path have beginning point end point and what is the arrival type is it a positive leading edge or falling edge so it's it will give you and then skew if you have skew values it will consider and analysis view also default it is there and end arrival time it will give and the old old value and then set up required arrival time and calculation so now if you as per the calculations it is now coming minus 0.54543 even minus 0 0.001 also it will consider so it is like a negative slack negative slack means it may not work so in that time what we have to do if it is negative slack we have to see the design i mean sir, instantiation type there are four, three different instantiations here and then timing arc inside c to y a, a to y a to y, b to y a to y timing arc inside your cell and the cell type first cell nor gate three input nor gate x1 drive strength to three input NAND gate X1 drive strength and two input NAND gate XL is the drive strength and these are this cell delays. Now you can see this cell is minus 4, 0.046. So you can avoid this cell delay so that you can be it will be this path going to be correct. Uh, correction going to be happen and the slew contribution also we have to see and the load if it is a load more it will be increase the delay and arrival minus required time so you have some minus whenever you have the negative values you need to be consider that one for corrected this is all about timing related paths and uh, uh, timing um, it's a setup when you when you're doing the static timing analysis what are the required components to be analyzed and what type of checks we have to do 
and uh, mainly this here uh, two types of checks setup and hold violations if you are setup violations there are uh, primary four different techniques you can utilize either upsizing the cells so let's say like in my uh, path if it is a setup violations so this is the nand nand gate uh, three input nand gate three x uh, one so x1 is the drive strength three input nand gate so if i want to upsize this one i have to go for the same three input uh, nand gate or x x7 or 8 or whatever the maximum uh, drive strength in available in your standard cells and then reduced amount of buffering in the data path so this is one technique and then swapping high volt uh, iot low vt cells swapping so then inserting buffers in data path so your data path if you are insert the buffers it will be increase the delay so that it will be slow down in your data path so that's how you can be uh, it can be means fix your setup violations. So actually designers verification, physical verification engineers, they try one by one. And also experienced engineers, they immediately get to know that which technique to be used. So as a part of demo today, we're going to see one path, violated path upsizing okay, for the setup violations or either old violations. So when you come to old violations, fixes, this opposite, here upsizing here downsizing when you do the uh, setup upsizing when you go for old violations sizing downsizing that means if if i have the nand gate of x7 then i have to decrease that nand gate to x1 downsizing the drive strength so i'm just say, saying one example sizing and resizing so we call it as altogether resizing to uh, set up and hold violations how do you uh, fix the hold set up and hold violations by resizing or gate sizing in your path and also here adding buffers so here inserting buffers adding buffers near capturing flop so you have launch flop capture path capture flop so let's say like you have registered here dp flop so this is the uh, this clock here clock is there here clock so your capture clock and this is the launch 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 clock so you are going to be add some buffers in this launch uh, path or capture sorry capturing path this is capture path and this is the launch path and then vt again swapping low vt volt iot cells so lvt ivt cells are there specialized cell types available in the technology library so that we can be use that and we try to be aware this setup and hold violations. So this is, uh, I think, uh, if you have any questions, I think we can discuss. Otherwise, we'll immediately get into the demo. So do we have, uh, shall we start the demo or take the break or suggest? So, so dear participant, do you have any more queries? Uh, in static time analysis as of now, whatever we have seen. The person is ready to answer for our questions. Sir, I want request from my side. I'm going to connect my another device. It's a username Ntiple2. Uh, kindly give the sharing permissions. Okay. So yeah. Screen sharing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if we don't have any questions, then we can take the break. And uh, so what uh, means what is the time for we can come back, sir? Can you please uh, suggest so that? Okay, so now shall we go for the break? OK, so now yeah, we'll take a minute, uh, 15 minutes break. Then we come back at 11.25, I think. Yeah. OK. Yes, fine then. Thank you. Thank you all participants. Uh, see you in the after tea break. 